Start shaking your hands, please. Yeah. As you shake, just close your eyes. Just do that, please. Yeah. Start shaking, start shaking. Take it up. Don't take it sideways. You'll hit your partner then. Yeah. Take it up, 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 up. More, more, more. Bring it down. Bring it down. Keep on shaking. Now stop shaking. Keep your eyes closed. Keep your hands on your thighs facing upwards. Take a couple of deep breaths. Deep, long breaths. Open your eyes when I ask you to do. Just listen to the instructions. As you open your eyes, you'll mind your eyes, your nervous system will be exposed to a set of 30 words. I'll expose that for barely 20, 30 seconds. Try and absorb as much as possible. Then followed by that, I'll also expose you to some images. We are doing it purposefully, and then you'll get to know maybe around 30, 40 minutes what happens to these patterns when it goes inside your brain. You're not meant to write these down. You're not meant to draw this out. OK? Just hold on, please. Yeah. Open your eyes, please. Memorize these words, whatever order you wish to. Okay, we'll go to images now. Very briefly, 10, 15 seconds. Set of five images. Please don't draw them. Feel the difficulty, the level of stress in the mind between this and the previous image. What you felt easy, what you felt difficult. The last one. OK, done. Now, try and avoid the urge to write them down. It's very natural. It's, it's typical of India, I would say. We have been very competitive all this while, ki nahi, wo 30 bula hai, toh mere ko 28 yaad ho nahi chahiye. This is not like that, OK? Now, I'll take you through some quick pointers about, and this is more of a theoretical framework, not too, too heavy. This is about how impressions are formed. So now we are just talking about how we develop these belief patterns. So the first are the things that we do, that you do in college. This is how you learn things. Hand, eye, sound, you know, senses coordination, that's part one. Experiences with living beings, it could be you're not technically doing anything, you're sitting with your grandparents or with your parents or with your friends, and you are picking up things, and it's, it's suddenly you realize you now know, you know how to do a new post or how to increase you know, some number of followers, like all, all that reference I'm referring about. Or what is the best hack for a better mileage on a bike? This can be anything like that. Then involuntary observation, this is where I will uh, connect a little later on. So while you are doing something, something else is happening in your background. While we think we are focusing on, let's say, my lecture, but parallelly, there are a lot of sounds are also coming. Can you sense that? And this is your ears are able to hear that, right? Now, that is also going inside. And what it does it, what this session is all about. Now, this is where the story starts becoming a little subjective. That is where your lens of prejudice versus skepticism will start peeping in. And I'm OK, whatever your lens is, like, just accept it for a while. So you inherit few things from parents, artist parents, both are playing, one is playing veena, one is tabla, there are 90% chances you believe the kid will also be into some kind of thing, right? And we call this prodigy, you know, teen saal mein tabla baja rahe hain. Have you heard these cases? Right? To some extent you've heard these cases, okay? Then subconscious learning uh, inside mother's womb. Uh, any idea by when the child movement starts? Which month? If it's an eight and a half month pregnancy or nine month pregnancy, by when the movement of the child starts inside? Four to five months, 
Till that time, it's only a biology. That is when the soul technically enters. Again, this is prejudice and skepticism. If you believe in that, it's okay. As that's the time when movements start, and that's we also hear. Uh, you know, these uh, these days there are courses called as Garbh Sanskar, where you actually tune the child much before uh, the child you know comes out into the world. Right? That's called as actually subconscious learning inside the mother's womb. Now, this is where it gets a little more difficult. Uh, sometimes we also call this a theory as a prarabdha theory, the talk, the first one, the uh, talk. So there is a word which is called as sanchit. It's not a person. Sanchit is the overall account of your good and bad deeds since the last 84 lakh rebirths. So one theory says you have taken 84 lakh rebirths before you got a human form. So whatever you have done as a butterfly, dog, X, Y, Z, whatever, the good and the bad part, it God gets documented. If you want to pick up anything of this, uh, do buy a book called as Laws of the Spirit World by Khurshid Bhavnagri. There it speaks about how this documentation happens in the dream state, which is called as a deep sleep state. Aapko pata hoga, like in this eight hour sleep, there is one part where you are technically not in your body, right? That's a time when you go to the base station and do, does your documentation. Right? So that's a documentation that you repay for in terms of two plus one theory, the karmas of your past two life plus this life, that makes a two plus one theory. Right? So that's, again, this is subjective. Huh? I see a lot of serious faces. That's good, actually. Okay. Then uh, from these experiences, you also develop something called as cravings and aversions from previous lives. That I'll cover pretty much in the last five minutes. And uh, uh, that, that is what is Vipassana is all about. You actually bring them to your body and you settle those dues. Right? I'll leave this part, original software. Now, experiences from non-sensory medium is what this session is mainly about. Because if we think that our being is formed by some conscious learning through an organized institution like this, this theory will possibly go and challenge that theory that I have picked up things which are much beyond my conscious way of learning. Okay? Now, start going deep inside. So, one way of learning is the way I am doing. You are the audience, I am talking, you understand English and Hindi both, I am presuming, and your mind is able to decipher what blah blah I am doing, correct? That is a direct way of communication via words and sound, right? In which your nervous system or your radio system is able to take that, catch that antenna and do that processing and then play it out to your brain, correct? There's, there is other means where let's say no words are said. Is there a communication in this? Yes. So what's the communication on the left? It's what do you make out from the left man? Okay. And what about the right person? Okay. Right. So that means your brain deciphered a visual stimuli which was reaching your brain. Correct? So this, in a way, we are gradually now going towards something called as a non-sensory medium. All right? Now, we'll go a little more deeper in a very, very mystical story. And it's a true story. It happened in Mount Abu in one of the Brahma Kumari camps. And there was a diamond merchant from Surat who went ahead. Have you heard of Brahma Kumari's Mount Abu? Thoda pata hai? Fantastic. So he was attending a camp, and this was a camp of all merchants. Uh, you know, these are you know rich people. So one guy was constantly having this dream that he's roaming around in the streets of Surat, and he wants to hire a shanty. Ek jhuggi wo lena chata hai, and he doesn't have 15,000 rupees with him. So he's very tensed. So he contacted the local teacher there, which they call as Didi. He said, Didi, is this my future? Is this what I came here for? So, why am I doing meditation? Fair point, right? And then Didi also got perturbed. She never knew what was happening. The same evening, luckily, the teacher happened to meet the cook of that group, the lady who's been cooking for the last four or five days. She was really disturbed and she was frying some puris. And she asked, you know, what happened? Why are you so sad? Why are you so sad? So, she said, Didi, my uh, landlord, where I live in Jhuggi, he has asked me to vacate. I don't have a husband, and I need 15,000 rupees, and I'm not finding that. With that thought, she was cooking for seven days, four, five days. You get some link there? So here is a human thought, possibly in some format going into, inside a food, and then this guy eating the food, and possibly that cell getting manifested in the same order. Of course, there is a question which comes. Were all other participants also having the same dream? That is what we'll explore it later on. So, you are now slightly clear. We are now growing, uh, sorry, going gradually to the extrasensory way of communication, right? And it's very important for a designer because tomorrow, when you will design, you will carry these set of bunch of bags of biases with you, and your output will be biased by that bias, right? Would you like to really do that? Is a choice which is for us as designers because I'm also a designer, okay? Here, yeah. another connected story, and this is also a two story. It happened in Japan. There were two uh, villages who were at a war for the share of a water body. Happens in India as well. Very, very common. Correct? So 
incidentally, one village on one side of the water body was deep into meditation. They used to practice a lot. So what they started doing was a smart trick. What they started doing was they started charging the water with the factors of love and compassion. And they said, what happens? So one month passed, two months passed, around third month onwards, the argument started coming down. That means the people of the other villages, they stopped fighting, intensity thona niche aya. And then this theory was further researched by Dr. Masaru Emoto, right? And from there came the concept of water crystal theory. So I did my Reiki in 2006, that is where I, I learned uh, this theory. So if you see the patterns here, so water is one of the best mediums which records human emotions. I'll say that again. Water is one of the best mediums which record human emotions. So if you see water crystals, there are crystals which are before prayer and after prayer. Right? Are you able to see that? Right? You see these beautiful shapes and the water immediately responds to that. And depending on the type of water, if it's Gangotri water, it will retain its charge for about three months of time period. But if it's like regular tap water and it's containing and recording those emotions, it takes it about for five to six days. Okay? So possibly it happened, they started charging the water body, the other person drank that, similar to the Brahma Kumari story, and they started having the feeling of love and compassion, and gradually thodi ladai down ho gaya. Okay, fair point? Okay, let's move ahead. Now parallelly, now uh, any guesses why I'm showing all this to you? I see some sleepy faces, but that's okay, that's normal. Any guesses why are we talking about this? Till now, most of us consider this to be superstitions, correct? It just so happened as a chance encounter, I stumbled upon few things which I'm sharing with you. You pick it or not, it all belongs to you. That's a different thing. It all belongs to all of us, right? It's a scientific connect of thought, colors and all. So somebody called us uh, in fourth century, Bharata, who wrote the first treatise of, called Natya Shastra. Have you heard of Navarasa? Okay, these are the Navarasas, right? So you find this very funny uh, compilation of heavy emotions on the left hand side and uh, lighter emotions on the right hand side. So how did these guys in 4th century knew that an emotion is associated with a certain color? That's a mystery. So if you pick up this book called Celestine Prophecy, uh, sorry, Celestine Prophecy by James Redfield, you'll find very interesting account of monks who are able to see these colors. So there could be all possibilities that around 5,000 years ago, people had a facility in which, in a certain meditative state, they were able to see the aura of person and these colors coming out and find out if the person is black blue in color that means the person has an erotic thought process that's what you see here if it's in yellow in color or white in color it's slightly on the better side of human emotions right okay fair point let's move ahead so what all we covered we covered the brahma kumari the story going into some a situation going into food into water then we saw the Reiki part where the water was charged and uh, some dispute was settled and now we are seeing that in 4th century somebody saw colors. Now, incidentally when this was happening, there was a person called as Kirillian. Have you heard of that? There is a photography which got invented in 19, uh, sorry, 1784 and then it, there were regular advancements called as Kirillian photography which through a digital camera and of course there was not a digital camera, they could actually sense I would photograph these images. So there is an organization in Delhi called as Reiki Healing Foundation. They created their own DAS, which is called as Digital Aura Scanner. It has the capacity to photograph the aura energy of that particular object. So what you see on the left hand side is a water which is, has a very anger quotient to it. Sorry, I'll go back. You see the Rother Furious over there? So some colors are as is, and since it's a technology, it will take a while to develop, correct? Let's agree over there. But the same water, once actually given some positive charge, changed its colors. And you'll find these references, and this is about a meditator who's, if you see the area of energy which is being emanated. So I'll just quote two examples over here. You would have heard from your elders a uh, single line statement, Har kisi ke ka pani nahi peena Right? This comes from this theory. Right? And Guru Nanak Dev Ji ke kaha jata tha ki when he used to go from one village to other, unke aane ki khabar dusre village ko pehle hi lag jati thi. Right? Now, amongst the living beings, if you have got pets, do pets have this tendency to figure out that somebody is about to come? Yeah. That means due to their innocence, they are able to sense that aura. That means he exists to karta hai. Right? We agree or not. Now, again, few connected episodes. 
there are few relatives or elders who you always like to be with right because you are a little low on energy that person is a little high on energy there is a regular osmotic relationship you know lower state to higher state and higher state to lower state you get drawn to those people that is how we make friends correct and there are people who just come and sit next to you feel like utke chale jaate hain you have this or no so you can just very well make out what kind of energy charge they were possibly having so you felt like that right that is where is coming from the bottom of circuitry uh, which is what we got from a jungle ancestor okay yahan tak theek hai okay so there is the same thing which happens when you are too low too depressed would you like to go to a junkyard or do you drive down some 200 kilometers to a far barren land bike park kari coffee pee ek tambu wala raat ko soye aur aa gaye what do we do we, do we go to junkyard no this is one of the reason the few lands you get always attracted to because they have been carrying incidentally uh, the word devbhumi uh, the lands of himachal uttarakhand they always carried that charge always always that's why people all hooligans everybody who is very low on energy slightly depressed they get drawn to those places right if you're really sad you will not go to mumbai that's where i live <laughs> right so once from mumbai people go to pune because pune if you know pune hosted a lot of these sons there are a lot of ashrams in pune lot of this natural land theek okay? hai and uh, Uh, the best in fact in celestine prophecy you will find accounts of these monks uh, who are talking and meditating next to a tree and they are taking the energy from the tree and that is why nature is called as ma right mother nature because she gives you pure energy all the time okay slightly in place thoda sa neend bhaga aap logo i am grateful thank you <laughs> okay so now you may ask and this normally uh, in the last 5 years lot of people have asked me this how how are you doing on time because i need to rush through a lot of things oh, how, how much we have consumed so far oh god okay i need to rush because there is a solution part which is very dear to me i do know there will be 10% out, audience out here okay okay so this is a practical example uh, called as yogic farming uh, which is uh, plants and vegetables grown through the factor of love i'll keep the long story short they experimented through three mediums chemical farming organic farming and yogic farming so in yogic farming what they do is they devise the entire process they broke it into various pieces so the concept of seed they talk to the seed for two months ek bora hai uske andar beej rakhe hue hain they'll talk to the seed for two months that you have potential you are the sweet little bean you will go out and you know serve my mother and everything so so much of love and compassion given to that seed then sapling phase again there is a different phase of meditation they talk to lizards rodents they request them not to bother this farmers area and they actually go away so they don't use pesticides no insecticides are used uh, even urea is not used over there because the growth is given like a mother to a right and beautifully over a period of 3 years what happened was the entire land where this was being practiced and if you can see through there are these universities which are already part of it there are, there are four more which i have not listed out here right they are actually practicing this with a cluster of about 28 villages in total right so the best thing which happened was their growth increased so much after third year with less water less input so that means they are more in profitability but when they tested it out in actual bazaar they realized people were invariably drawn to the yogic farming products similar to that land case if you are little low you'll go to a person who has a higher leave of energy sounds okay that means with less investment they were growing better and the by product of that was in those 28 villages the consumption of alcohol came down drastically because around 4 5 hours they have to meditate various times of the day wo karega kya usko meditate hi karna hai right so gradually body heal hua theek hai liquor ka habit kam hua okay so here and and uh, one anecdote uh, uh, out here i just started testing this process for the first time in my life in reliance where four uh, including me there are five people who have become active meditators we spoke to hr and we are trying to test a mechanism where we are bringing meditation in the center of design practice and corporate governance to see what kind of wealth it attracts so early results have been very promising we are one of the most loved departments in it's a very old industry called as refinery and marketing very very positive 
and we are supposed to suppose work on about 150 odd products. We have just worked on two products, but the initial, I would say the pat on the back is so overwhelming, we sometimes tend to think because the diktat in my team is, particularly I've hired more girls, about 70% mother nature again, right? that's the reason I knew about the secret mantra. So the instruction is if you are upset, you will not work that day. That is a said thing. If you don't feel like just leave early, I will mark your attendance. As a result, what happened, whatever good intentions they had, it went into that digital product and the person who was using that, whether they know me or not, they know my name today. That ye kaam unke department se to achha hoga. So initial results have been really promising, but of course for a proper theory to formulate, I require about one more year. Hopefully by next year, you know, we'll have some ROI factors also coming in to see. And why we are not following this, just because we are a product of a Western civilization, agar yehi Harvard ne kiya, MIT ne kiya, Kellogg's ne kiya, to some three spiritual theories ke naam se hamare paas paunchega, with some wavelength calculation, right, with five Ps also mixed in that, right, and you'll say, ah, I got certified by Harvard over there. I'm not against that institute. I'm just simply saying, normally hum log apna achha wala nahi dekhte hain. And that is how we have been trained over the last 300 years. Okay, let's move ahead. The, now the question is, do we really bother about these unseen emotions? I'll proceed ahead. Answer is yes, because we are 68% water, right? So we carry these impressions all the time without knowing why I'm getting angry or why I'm getting, you know, X, Y, Z, okay? Now, these are few of the things you have known, a prayer room next to a kitchen or the culture of prayers before food, right? Or not talking or not talking about a gory crime which has happened in Delhi or in Mumbai during the time of food. These are few of the reasons because your energy is changing. In turn, you're changing the energy of the entire room and the food, right? X, Y, Z, and then coming ahead. Okay. This part I would request you, I'm just brushing upon, don't look up on your own. This was part of my research. It had very adverse effect on me. I'll just briefly inform about this. this these are all uh, games of the war world. People who are about acquisition, inquisitions, whatever you call them, right? Expansion, ye unke khel hai, right? These, of, these researches never undertook. I'll just inform about uh, the first two. Sirenoids are the ones in which the nervous system channels are bypassed and given to someone else. These are sirenoids. So if I'm raising my arm and I put a plug, now the BMI, which is brain machine interface developed by Elon Musk uh, is already in place. So suppose you hack that channel and that hack is uh, there are about, let's say, 80,000 implants or 40,000 implants done at different part of the brain. And I have access to that. If I am raising my brain, those 80,000 people will also be raising their hands at the same time. That is sirenoid. Synesthesia is a very tricky technique in which suppose you want to taste butter chicken, but you don't want to have the calories of butter chicken. So you hear a sound which will, from one sense, it will deliver a, a message to the other sense. So hearing the sound, your mouth will start having a taste of a butter chicken. It's very cost effective, calorie efficient as well. That is called as synesthesia. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Uh, silent sound spectrum was used in the Iraq war. I again request you, I know I've been told you, but you see, but don't do that. I at least tell your next door partner that I'm looking up for these topics because they all carry subliminal energies when you're researching from them. And most of, uh, because it has got published in a paper which I wrote in 2015 at NIT Calicut. So my family reported I went into a lot of aggression during this one and a half month of research. So I request, because here I'm not talking about a blah blah knowledge which I haven't tested on my own. Whatever I'm speaking about is something which I have gone through in my own life over the last 47 years, right? So if parents say, don't put plug in your hand, 440 volts. Ka jatka. Of course, we all do that. I don't know how many of you have done that. I actually put a small pin and then, you know, switched it on to actually feel, right? But suppose if it's not 440, it's 2000 volts, then it's really difficult, right? Okay. So quick repack part is simply messages, feelings, belief patterns can transfer without our conscious knowledge. Water is one of the carriers. There's electrical wave frequencies which affect. They are being surrounded here. We are surrounded all the time, right? They affect us. Right. Now, before I end this part, which is a flash image test, you say if everything is happening so fast, why are we given a brain like that? So just to feel that, I'll show you an image just to demonstrate the potential of the brain that we have inherited from our jungle ancestors. I'll just show it for one second and then we'll have a quick one minute discussion from that. Fair game? Okay. What was there, any idea? 
ओके लेट स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द टॉप अभी तो आप बोलोगे नहीं वॉज इट इंडिया और यू एस ओके वॉज इट कश्मीर और समवेयर इन यू पी ओके वॉज इट अ डे और नाइट सीक्वेंस ओके वॉज इट अ रेगुलर अर्बन सीक्वेंस और स्लाइटली रूरल सीक्वेंस वॉट वॉज हैपनिंग देयर द मैन वॉज वेरिंग अ हेलमेट और नो वॉज इट अ लाइक विवेक ओबरॉय वेरी रिच पर्सन और सम वन फ्रॉम लोअर मिडिल क्लास लाइक हाउ मिन वर द किड्स और एडल्ट ऑन द बाइक ओके वॉज इट अ हायर भूसा और लाइक रेगुलर हीरो हॉन्डा ओके वॉर द किड्स वेरिंग और मल्टीपल कलर्स और सिंगल कलर पॉसिबली सिंगल कलर वॉज इट अ सिटी स्केप और अ रूरल लैंडस्केप लैंडस्केप वॉज इट स्काई इन द बैकग्राउंड एंड ग्रास और वॉज इट वॉर द माउंटेन्स सो इफ आई आस्क फोर्टी मोर क्वेश्चन यू विल आंसर दैट इन लेस देन वन सेकेंड दैट मीन्स एन इमेज केम इन साइड इट हैज सच मैसिव कंप्यूटिंग पावर कुछ तो रीजन होगा नहीं हमको दिया हुआ है एंड दिस आई एम टॉकिंग वन सेकेंड आई एम नॉट इवन टॉकिंग अबाउट द लास्ट हाफ एन आवर विच आई एम डूइंग ब्लब 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 तो बहुत कुछ चल रहा है अंदर राइट सो इसका पर्पज क्या है सो लेट्स गो डाउन वाई सच पावरफुल मशीनरी हैज बिन गिवन टू अस विदाउट आवर अंडरस्टैंडिंग राइट दिस इज द रीजन सो वी हैव टू पार्ट ऑफ द ब्रेन लिम्बिक ब्रेन एंड अदर रीजन द टॉप माइंड वी कॉल दिस द फ्रंटल न्यूकॉटिक्स Limbic brain occupies 90% of our being. Actually, we have inherited this from a jungle ancestor, and it's only focus on three things: food, threat, and reproduction. आप इसके अगेंस्ट जाएंगे वो rebel करेगा. आपको भूख लगती है तो गुस्सा आता है, right? Reproduction, no guesses. I guess, of course, humanity has solved that problem. But with jungle ancestors, they used to typically beautify themselves, like a one hathi and a hathni. or maybe you know one this and this and they will parade themselves they will outshine other person that is why the competition sense we have also inherited right and other part is quite clear which is about the threat part so i'll just expose you to something and we'll see some patterns of why we carry these uh, you know pangs of fear for certain species okay what is this it's a tiger okay How many have actually faced this? Like day to day, I'm bar sitting in lecture. Me, a tiger nikal ke gaya. No. Dog nikal ke jayega, hum dhyan nahi dete hain, right? But ye a gaya, to thoda sa aata hai. But in this life, were we ever attacked even once, face to face by a tiger? Answer is no. But we still have tiger dreams sometimes. A tiger, wo Gujarat ki sadhko mein ghumta hai, gir jungle ka wo pura video viral ho jata hai. You have seen those, right? Dog ghum raha hai, wo video viral nahi hoga. right so where did we inherit it this is this millions of years of evolution where the species were attacked by tiger we still carry that software is your android has this bloatware you have heard that right that is a bloatware we carry we have the same things for spiders and for snakes as well none of us have actually you know been attacked your ghar mein bachpan mein dikhta hi rehta tha nahi but still we have this phobia for snakes we got this default software with a lot of this is junk software and it's only for food threat and reproduction okay i'll show you one more image what is this so the recall for this image was it same as the recall for the skin of the tiger it's taking much longer because the data is not there in your brain you were never attacked by this object this is the object none of you have a top impression of a water bottle because it never harmed us that is why it never went into the millions of evolution of biology okay yeah so brain trashes data which is not connected to the three factors that's why humko padhai karne mein bahut takleef hota hai because it's not a threat factor right it's not affecting neither the food yeah reproduction is one part which we all get carried ki agar fail ho gaye to kya hoga फेल हो गए तो क्या होगा अच्छा लड़का नहीं मिलेगा या लड़की नहीं मिलेगी सुनते हैं पेरेंट्स से दैट स्टेटमेंट इज अगेन कमिंग फ्रॉम द जंगल इंसिस्ट्री कि इफ देर इज अ लूजर इन अ क्लैन ऑफ हाथी व्हाट विल हैपन विल ही गेट अ राइट टू मेट और नॉट नो द सेम फियर वी गेट व्हेन वी लूज आई आई टी एंट्रेंस एग्जाम ओके नाउ राइट द नंबर ऑफ वर्ड्स यू कैन रिकलेक्ट and then we'll end this part of the session and we'll go to and briefly about 10 minutes for the solution part as much as you can remember spellings are not required jitne aapko yaad aa rahe hain just write the words which you are able to remember
once you are done with the words and don't make uh, this is not a competition just write them i just did the numbers of count those who are done move forward to drawing two images which you are able to recollect which we also memorized okay those who are done with uh, we don't have a white marker okay fine uh, those who are done with words how many what are the counts which are coming up anybody with a random hand it's okay if the first person that the factor of food threat and reproduction reproduction hit karega wo loser ka feeling aata hai bolte hue yeah number 10 fantastic 10 uh 9 okay 5 fantastic 5 Six. Okay. Those who had a uh, figure of ten, uh, did they deploy any strategy to memorize it? Uh, what is that? Can you just say a little loud? Uh, maybe put them in a. Okay, fine. This is a common uh, pattern, right? So the ones who have uh, one, two, five, they are the ones who are really attentive in the session because they actually got with the flow of the story. I'll explain the reason why a bit now. Okay, that's okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so the ones who are normally have this competitive spirit, I'm not blaming you, huh? This is please. It's not a one-on-one -on -one comment. They have numbers rising up to 18, 19, and sometimes 25. Because the session sunte hi nahi hai. Unhone unhone bola hai toh mera chhakka marega hi marega. And the, throughout the session, they are memorizing, memorizing, and memorizing. And I'll talk about that theory now. Okay? And uh, have you done uh, drawing the first two drawings that you are able to come across? Okay? What is the? Can you describe that? What have you drawn? AT and T. One is AT and T. Another. Okay, the W kind of. Okay. See, if you, uh, this is I think could be my thirtieth session. I don't remember well. Even if I do it with IITians or with the parliamentarians, the answer is same. That means there is something inherent about the calculation of the brain which it de decides. because here we saw that brain trashes 99% of the data right right lot of data it does calculation close to 11 million the limbic brain per second right what it does it anything which is not relevant to apne aap delete kar deta hai and that is what all happened with you right so and in the words how many of you heard salman khan in dabang okay so that's called as pattern making and pattern breaking if i had taken all Bollywood words, you would have a difficulty depending on your nearest association with a certain word, which happens in the case of Nelson Normand. अपनी study में कहा है, which is called a recall. Sorry, uh, recognize and recall. It happens in three phases. How recently a memory chunk has been practiced. वो word फटाफट recall होता है. Okay. So this this is the common one. So that means as designers, if you know how the inner brain works you can make make a pattern and also break a pattern it's like you can actually force a person to look in a certain dimension or a direction okay thank you we'll take a 5 minutes break then i'll talk about how to break the pattern those who are interested please come i'm okay with one person sitting in the class i have done that in the past as well yeah thank you you can take a break
Okay, we'll get going. Um, I have strict timelines. I respect the presence of other speakers as well. I also understand, I mean, it's quite a shock to me because normally your generation, they decide to stay out, <laughs> right? So I'm happy that you are partly interested in this. Okay. <clears throat> so bit of a recap. Now I'm entering to something uh, which is connected with all of us. So we spoke about the subliminal factors of energy transfer, transfer through water, transfer through thoughts. Now we talk about something which is called human to human equation. That is we all are surrounded with, right? So here in this part, don't feel guilty if you associate with one of the factors. I'll say that again, don't feel guilty. Try and work out on that factor, OK? And believe me, there is a word which is called I belong to you. Um, India is my mother. We all are her children. You belong to me as much as I belong to you. So give me a shout. Koi session separately karna hai, dissolution ka isko problem ko solve kaise karna hai. Just get in touch with your faculty and I'll be here. Right? This, this is for the betterment of the country, what I'm doing. OK? Let's move ahead. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Switch. Now we are moving to the part which is very sacred to me called eraser or erasing a particular impression. And it, depending on circumstances, it takes sometimes months. Sometimes it gets done in few days only. But don't try hacks. Of course, if any idea comes to your mind, please try and reach out to me. I know we are not that related, but I am here for you. Okay? Now this is a true story which happened with me. Uh, so this is how most of this, what you see here started. It was way back in 2008. I was fresh uh, from IIT. 2006, I did my uh, master's in design. I went back to Delhi, and I was teaching in this institute uh, for advertising. So I had given this assignment. You can read out here. It's an advertising communication design assignment. Brand is uh, LIC. Uh, if you've heard of LIC, Life Insurance Corporation, lower middle income group, what you call as guards or drivers. They want to buy one, one room set or something like that for 20 lakh rupees. They want loan loan them. They want to make an ad. So I'll skip the gun now here. And it was a batch full of girl students, by the way, right? They had to come out with character sketch of who are the actors who will be acting in their film. I guess you guys might be doing something like this as well, where it will be animals, male, female, kya parivar hoga, bachche ka naam kya hoga, wife kya karti hai, you know, husband kya karti hai, X, Y, Z. So what they came up with with this, mostly entire batch had a couple, working husband and a homemaker wife, right? Wife is fair-skinned. They had to write down as well, right? Now, everything was fine. What stuck me was something in the middle, which is this, from where this was coming. You even see today, you'll find traces of this, what I researched way back in 2008, still happening, right? So boy's name was Ishan or Aryan or Karthik. You'll never hear like Suresh, Ramesh, Vijay. I, I doubt if there is even one kid in the ad which has been named Vijay Dinanath Johan or whatever it is, right? I carry this weird name, right? <coughs> Then I started studying this, and then I realized nobody told them that they need to have a male child. And this became such a big problem because a year later, I was working in my advertising campaign for one of the water purifiers. The client was based in Mumbai. I can't name the client, unfortunately. I am a girl fan. I have a girl daughter as well, right? So it's now, not then. Okay. So in my communication for a campaign for a water purifier, I had put all visuals of a girl child. Everything, the 12 calendar, 12 pages, all girl child. They love the calendar. Feedback came from Mumbai saying, you replace everything with a boy child. Argument started. My director had to intervene. Then they sent me data for three states where they were present, which is Gujarat, Maharashtra, at least two of them. They had service covering mothers who wanted a boy as a first child. This is, was the start. This was similar to why I have to buy a 2 BHK, remember? I not 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 2 BHK. 1 BHK. That's okay. But from where all this was coming? Then I started studying all these ad patterns, and this was, in a nutshell, what I discovered. 87% of these ads had these images of this boy, uh, you know, with these names. Uh, of course, in way back, I think this was in 2007, Tarizumimpa uh, came in. So Ishan word, if you remember, also came from there in the lexicon. Right? All this was happening. None of these ads, barring few ads, had grandparents as part of the visual. And they affect and they affect our decision-making pattern. Did you notice in the ad, nobody spoke about the grand, uh, grandparents in the ad? It's only a couple. These images are where they come from. They come from our society. 
राइट एंड ये आप जाके ज्वाइन करेंगे एंड देन यू हैव टू फाइट देम एज वेल इट्स नॉट इजी टू फाइट दे विल से दे वांट अ फेयर गर्ल इन द एड डू यू सी एनी एड इनफैक्ट लुक एट इंडिगो एयरलाइंस मोस्ट एयरलाइंस आई वाज वेरी हैप्पी टू सी फाइनली समवन लाइक मी इन विस्तारा टुडे मॉर्निंग इट्स वेरी वेरी रेयर टू फाइंड दैट ऑल दिस इज कमिंग फ्रॉम द सेम फूड थ्रेट एंड रिप्रोडक्शन इफ दे डू समथिंग थोड़ा सेल्स में फर्क आएगा राइट इट्स अ शेम बट इट्स अ फैक्ट राइट ओके या so this story started from there right now we are talking about human to human so suppose we have a coffee cup i got a coffee cup i it was like about 98 degrees hot i kept it in this room will it remain like that no but did i do anything to change its temperature answer is no there is a natural thing which was happening so this happens again aapne usko even in case if you touch a cold uh, i would say can the coldness reduces because a part of that has come to your hand but did you do it deliberately answer is no there is a natural phenomena of this called concept called as energy exchange sometimes osmosis keh dete hain that means energy tries to balance itself at some level right you can't stop that process be it what okay so in the case of humans you have uh, seen this one visual we are full of these nine set of emotions other person is also full of nine uh, set of emotion right they are coming not in contact with each other but there there is some distance apart okay right they are not even looking at each other and this is somehow related to this concept of sangat or a company so what happens was the aura energy of these people they start communicating with each other and they'll try and reach some kind of a state that means the good energy will start mixing into the bad one and the bad will start mixing into the good one and this is what happens actually there are certain places where you feel drained out with people and there are certain places you come back a little charged that's why we go and meet the counselors but try and find the life of those counselors whom we go and meet their life is absolutely miserable after one or two years of full time counseling they have to go into meditation there is no other option because they consume so much of that which is this part of the energy but the people who are coming for counseling they are effectively coming there for that kind of energy they are not going there because they are full of energy और दे आर फुल ऑफ जॉय एंड हाँ बहुत मज़ा आ रहा है जब हम काउंसिलर से मिल के आते हैं उसका सर खाएंगे वी डोंट डू लाइक दैट ओके क्लियर दिस इज ऑटोमेटिक एनर्जी ट्रांसफर हैपनिंग इन रिस्पेक्टिव यू नो द पर्सन और नॉट एंड दिस हैपनिंग इन दिस रूम राइट नाउ ओके द सेकेंड इज द लाइन ऑफ साइट यू लुक एट समबडी द एक्सचेंज स्टार्ट्स हैपनिंग यू शेक हैंड दिस इज कॉल्ड इज द ब्रीफ लिमिटेड कॉन्टैक्ट typical to tap and pay this is or the bluetooth transfer you're just looking randomly at each other so in most meditation camps you'll find you're not permitted to look at the eyes of the other meditator aapko niche dekhna hai because wo energy transfer hoga nahi to okay this part is where it gets a little more serious it's called as deep level physical contact i had no other graphic to maine ye dala hai please pardon me because i can't put the other graphic right it's called as the fiber data transfer right and hence you'll find after marriage you'll find uh, oh, often mothers of both parties commenting mera ladka shaadi ke baad change ho gaya hai have you heard that ya yeah, meri bachchi meri apni bachchi nahi rahi you will also hear that what has nearly happened is there has been a deep level impression transfer happening due to the communion and the energy is trying to settle and it takes about 4 5 years for a proper energy to settle okay so what you are simply saying suppose you married somebody who had a very hard karmic baggage like wo past life mein bahut kaand bond karke aaya hua tha now you carry that baggage on your body now your suffering will increase for some time and then it will try and settle correct problem doesn't end here problem happens in a situation which is on the left hand side when we have equations with multiple so i am not talking about social setup this is not about social dilemma i'm sim simply saying here download what you can dissolve if you download too much of data from other people their likely chances will end up into a very miserable state where your mind won't know what the data downloaded because what you are downloading effectively is this bunch of emotions you don't have a narrative it's not like you touch somebody you immediately you know are ye tu ye kaliya vada pav kha ke aaya tha you can't do that you have a resultant effect because human biology is so smart it just stores the emotion not the narrative it's only in this life you have some narrative available but with the 2 plus 1 ka theory mein you don't have a narrative you just get a factor now what happens there in this situation if this side becoming way too hot i would say then biology starts stepping and i'll talk about in the solution part is this part clear 
The third is what you already know call as clairvoyance. You are in some state in, in America, somebody is in Singapore, you think about that person, uska phone aa jata hai. Do you have this thing happening? That means there is some connection which is there <coughs> beyond. Or us connection may be aapka data transfer ho hai, right? Now comes the, uh, <coughs> I would say slightly scary part. If we are constantly downloading data, a data, we'll have something called as a confused software. You become a mix of Android, iOS, Blackberry, XYZ, everything, where your apps will start crashing. That is when you go to a counselor. Okay? I'm not saying you are the bunch. Please, this is not the factor, right? The factor is not directed. I'm just simply narrating that's the reason why single marriage was kind of seen as a better thing. It's not about society. It was seen from the data perspective. We are only talking science here. <coughs> Another part, <coughs> excuse me, which you have heard from my parents, kisi ke baare mein bura mat socho. Sunai? This is where it comes from. Ye, this I just read 15 days ago because things unfold in your life if you're on a certain path. If you think bad about somebody, that the bad part of that person data starts coming to my body. But if you think good about somebody, the good part of that data comes to my body. Physics is so beautiful, it's so simple. That's why we say most of the time have some name in your head. Bolte na, Bhagwan ka naam karo, chai Allah karo, chai Jesus karo, it doesn't matter. Right? But uske baare mein bura mat socho. Because there is the direct data transfer similar to what you saw in this visual. Okay? Now this is what makes your nature. You are nothing but a bunch of these emotions and what actually makes is this one. Right? I'll briefly touch upon this topic called as Subhav. Subhav is your innate nature which is a combination of all these emotions and Swadharm is your nature of work. So there are people who inherently are very compassionate. If they join army, there is a dissonance. Similarly, if there are very aggressive people, they become surgeons, thoda sa problem hai. You've seen Munna Bhai, they will not hold the scalpel like this, they will hold it like this. Right? That is where the problem happens. So first, so there are camps in the country who helps you define these factors, right? This topic is beautifully covered in this Triology series books. And it says society, institutions, family fail because they don't know their so how and they land up into a wrong swadharma. Right? So if you start segregating this properly, even maybe in your batch, you'll suddenly find bl people blossoming. So aggressive people possibly taking up projects which are connected around, let's say, bikers, you know, adventure sports. It kind of matches with their personality and you'll be in a state of joy. Okay. Now, the problem part, in the case of humans, we can't delete a data, but if you've got a bug in your system, you can delete that. That much you know, right? But it's a slightly false theory. So people, our yesteryear people, way back 5,000 and 2,005 years ago, that is when, you know, techniques got invented. These are the two techniques and this is my last slide, right? So what now we have is, we have this set of emotions, they are stored effectively in, let's only talk about two kind of emotions. We have anger, we have, let's say, grief, and we have guilt, two, three kind. Good or bad emotion? Bad emotion. They are energy sappers. They require a lot of maintenance. So these kind of emotions, they get stocked in our atom. That is called a cell memory. And the body does beautiful segregation. Wo body mein ek part mein isko ek karna chalu hai. Your brain is not the only center for memory, mind it. Every part of the body is utilized for memory. So suppose the bad data is getting stocked up in one area. There is no way you can delete that. What it does it, anytime new anger comes it, uska memory wo udhar feng deta hai. Similarly, grief ka idhar chala gaya, guilt ka idhar chala gaya. They keep on piling, it's like a garbage in your kitchen, and then it starts fuming, giving fumes. Good fumes or fragrance? They'll be really bad fumes. When the pressure becomes too much for the body to bear, there is an outburst. That is what we call as anger or crying. Because body will release kar rahi hai, right? In later stages, if it's become too much for the body, right, the rotten part becomes so rotten, that part is called as cancer. Right? And if a certain body part or a certain, I would say, data drive has too many of these grief, anger, guilt, criticism, all stocked up, or it requires a lot of energy to maintain, body switches off one part of the body to retain the other part of the body, that phenomenon is called as paralysis. And if it's way too overbearing, it's called as a stroke. Ki ab ye ab maintenance ke bahar hai. Are you able to catch with me? Now comes the solution part. I'll keep this. I think it's not required now. Are you interested in solution or no? Okay, thoda thoda, chalo. That's my fun part. Okay, so uh, Guruji, Gurudev, Ravi Shankar sir, he went back to this because he knew about the technique, other techniques, and they are very hard techniques, like Vipassana is a very hard technique, I've done Vipassana as well, 
right? And I received a Siddhi as well, but I'll talk about the easy part. So Sudarshan Kriya was devised. In Sudarshan Kriya, in 45 minutes, the core Kriya, your body is sent into a panic mode. Please listen very carefully. Extreme panic mode, the kind of breathing ex assignments you do, is similar assignment which was also invented by another person called as Osho. I don't know if you've heard of that. That was called as catharsis. It was first invented in Pune. But catharsis is slightly antisocial. Matab, it doesn't look like the way you do things. Aapko lagta hai, nahi kar it's not about having you know, intercourse. It's not like that. Right? Wo ek alag cheez popular ho thi. So in Sudarshan Kriya, in 45 minutes, your body is sent into a dimension of extreme panic. In extreme panic, these atoms, anger, jealousy, they suddenly start feeling that body is going to die. This sharira is going to die. They come out of their room. Otherwise, they don't come out. They just send the fumes out. They stay there. There's no way you can delete. The moment they come out, the good cells who were the policemen of her body, who till now were there in the fire center or in the police station, they also come out saying, this is my sharira. I need to protect it. They pack these ugly guys in water molecules. I say that again. In water molecules, and they start getting flushed out of body. So this is in few situations. So suppose it's like you bought a property in Chandigarh. Outskirts mein liya ki retirement mein rahenge. Tis saal pehle liya. But due to whatever reason, aap nahi ja pahe. You could not even send a person to clean it. Wo band rahe property. Now after 30 years, you felt, I have to go and stay. When you open the door of the property, what do you expect now? Dust, fumes, right? Lot of bad faults, man. This is what happens, also happens in Sudarshan Kriya. If the body has a lot of toxicity, depending you had multiple partners or the previous karma is too bad, suddenly the body finds an avenue and through water, it will start flowing out. You may have loose motions. You may have a, a diarrhea I've spoken about, vomiting. You may have excessive perspiration. This is through water medium. If the events of the past are so bad, you will suddenly have a fever. But this is good because body is kind of now started cleaning. I understood the technique. It's a three-stage pranayam. Over a period of six months, three months, gradually you'll find people who are your enemies because you stored their data on your body. They suddenly are a little more calmer, right? This I'm talking from experience over the last two years. This I'm not talking Hawami. Okay? So it's a very simple, it's a water-based technique where karmas are flushed out of body via water as a channel. Right? There are various other courses as well for intuition program in uh, uh, Sahaj Samadhi. Sahaj Samadhi, you get a beach mantra which you have in a state of meditation and deeply implant in your subconscious mind such that you get the right vibrations and the right... It's like, ye stock lena hai, ye nahi lena hai. Aaj ye class karni hai, nahi karni hai. Theek hai? Aaj mujhe lag raha hai, wala. Ye sab udhar se aata hai fir. You leave your body, you, you're like a radio, you cleaned your antenna, which had a lot of garbage and junk, and then you started communicating with the higher power. I'm not naming any religion here, right? Is it clear? Right? So those who haven't tried, please do. If you have any factor which your parents have commented on or you have discovered, it can be easily flushed out of your body. You just need to have patience. Vipassana on the other side is a different kind of a concept where you merge your subconscious layer lower layer and the conscious layer over a period of 10 days, which is the 10-day course. Gradually, the lower body mein jo karma jama hota hai, wo aapko pata chalta hai. You recall that karma, aapko episode nahi pata aapne kya kiya hai. You bring that to one more of the parts of the body. It could be your leg, anything. You may have extreme pain. You may have extreme itching happening, right? You may have extreme heating sensation to the tune of almost 100 degrees burning, but wo burn nahi hota hai. If you touch outside, it will be like normal. Right? You focus very carefully on that body part and then you burst it. That is Vipassana. Right? Second technique is slightly more difficult. First is easy because you don't feel that much of pain. Because that is why Vipassana is based on concept called as equilibrium or equanimity. Right? Because the amount of agony that you attract in your body, in fact in one of the sessions I had a lower body paralysis. But since I knew this hai, I was calm. I somehow managed to drive the car. It took seven days to dissolve that piece which I downloaded in my body. Ke B -b very beautiful technique, not a problem. Right? So you download, you dissolve. You download, dissolve is that technique which is called as Vipassana. Right? Objective of this life, in case if you're listening to this very carefully, is to pick one path, not both. I had a different path which has been decided by my guru, so I have taken, I have to take both paths. Maybe I think it's for due to teaching because I had to experience both. Okay? Right? 
सो दिस इज एब्सोलूटली ब्यूटिफुल कि इसमें को हार्ट अटैक की फीलिंग होती है धड़ 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 होता है सो आई मेट अ फिल्म डायरेक्टर ही हैड दैट फीलिंग सो ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ टेन डेज हिज हिज फीलिंग वॉज ऑलमोस्ट वन मीटर वाइड ही फेल्ट कि वो बॉडी के बाहर जा रहा है ग्रेजुअली 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 थ्रू पेशेंस ही ब्रॉट इट डाउन टू द हार्ट सेंटर एंड स्टार्टेड वर्किंग ऑन दैट दैट्स वे पास ना इट्स एक्चुअली क्वाइट फन वंस यू स्टार्ट डूइंग इट इट बिकम्स क्वाइट फन राइट सुदर्शन क्रिया आई डोंट फील दैट इट जस्ट फ्लोज आउट ऑफ ए बॉडी एंड सम पीपल से मैं बीमार पड़ गया सुदर्शन क्रिया के बाद दैट्स नॉट करेक्ट बिकॉज द बॉडी इज जस्ट काइंड ऑफ रिलीजिंग दैट पार्ट ऑफ एनर्जी दिस इज वेयर आई एंड यू कैन गो नाउ थैंक यू I have never been in a quieter session after the session has been done so i think everybody is in a contemplation introspection reflection mode right now somebody might be thinking what did we just witness uh but i think we all have food for thought we definitely have some of us might have planned let's try this lot of us must be curious being designers we are curious beings by nature i'm sure we are curious to I don't like to use the word experiment lightly because it has too many connotations <laughs> these days. So, but at least curious to try and discover. Uh, thank you so much, Vijay. Uh, Niral, I would invite Niral to give the vote of thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Sambit. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vijay. It was uh, absolutely amazing. Rightly said, uh, you are like Gandalf, and we were like uh, Frodo and Samwise. throughout uh, the session as in how you were saying so your session was absolutely eye opener and of course uh, i ticker with uh, all your wisdom and wit uh, you tackled complex uh, topics like human biases and their impact on nature as well as design with uh, humor and clarity leaving us all buzzing with questions and new perspective absolutely who knew our memories impressions and even beliefs and patterns could play such a sneaky role in everything that we do in our day to day lives your call to action to reduce their neg negative effects in uh, is something that we will definitely heed thanks for reminding us that great designs considers not just aesthetics but also fascinating quirks of our human mind thank you once again from this intrigued and now slightly biased design audience a uh, huge round of applause for mr vijay uh thank you very much everyone The next session is going to start in 15 minutes, 3:15, right? We have some time. Uh, anybody has some questions? If for Vijay, anyone? Yeah, we have one question, please. Yes. Okay. Uh, before you ask, uh, most of us sometimes refrain to ask because I can completely understand with that mindset. is that factor of food threat and reproduction right so questions are normally not asked due to which factor is it food is it threat or is it reproduction it's effectively reproduction because there is a feeling what in case uh, if i ask a question which make me feel like a loser in the audience okay yeah please ask so don't feel like that huh? every question is welcome uh, it's an osmosis uh, so uh, my thought process emits an aura i am a radio jo bhi andar maine song store kiya hai main jab button dabaunga wo play hoga but since i have an antenna as well i hear other sounds as well right so it's a mutual exchange in depend that's why the word of sangat has come in the kind of people that you select in your life right is basically unknowingly modifies the way you think right and believe me those who walk on this path suddenly find unke friends ke group change ho jate hain and they feel quite disturbed ki the conversations which they enjoyed almost like you know for last 5 years they are no longer enjoying that conversation there is change happening inside them this is basically there is a third con con i would say ek desire jag raha hai ki life yahan tak nahi hai there is something more to it you were asking something louder uh 
Uh, it's a slightly difficult one. I need a different slide. Yes, answer is yes, right? Uh, brain, see, there are three parts. Uh, there is one called a center of life. So your navel center is the center of life. So if you are, let's say, if you have grown up on a ground floor, you suddenly go to the 30th floor pe chadha dega, balcony. Pe, and then they ask you to look down. I mean, where does the sensation happen? Is it here, here, or here? It's somewhere here, right? That is the center of life. So most of us, our center of life is not developed properly. And uh, the center of life is, is why is it called? Because that is how you understood life, because here the umbilical cord connect. Hota tha. And when the umbilical cord is severed, you suddenly find your server down. You start crying. This is the main reason why kids cry uh, when the umbilical cord, because the relation between that base center is severed. Now this is center of life, this is center of feelings. It's not heart as a pumping organ. In fact, liver is the organ which senses the feelings. Right? I used to wonder, I thought jigra means you know heart, but it's not jigra. Jigra is, is kaleji, which is called liver, right? So that's a, your organ of feelings actually. Then above that is called as your center of intellect, which is this. So uh, long years ago, three sounds were found out. First sound was a. Uh, I'll say the a. Uh, यहाँ आपके आपके vibration आएगा. Then there is u. उससे यहाँ से vibration आता है. And um यहाँ. If you combine these three sounds, it become um um. So it was meant that for us, all these three centers were important. So center of life, courage is important. Feelings, you need to have compassion and intellect is all important, right? So it's not just brain, one organ. Uh, effectively, all three all combined together. It just so happened we have put ourselves too much in a comfort zone. We don't have those things happening anywhere, that you have a spider, or you have to sleep, right? That's why my naval center is not developed. For people particularly who have went into adventure sports, or shararti, they have been in a building, they have been in a building, you notice that they normally tackle very tough jobs in life. Because their naval center is developed, not for people like me. I hope I answered. <laughs> uh, I think we can take a couple of more questions. Anyone? Ask, ask, ask. I don't think uh, us faculty members usually talk about these subjects because we have the scare of uh, coming across as a loser. <laughs> right? So a sense of threat happens. Uh, but we have somebody who has no such compulsion they don't consider themselves as a loser because they can answer anything. So please ask. Yeah, I think uh, one of the things of meditation, somehow you feel like uh, So it's a beautiful state to be. Nee, so be. I have a question there. Yeah, please if please. I have this thing, we live in a world of dualities. Yeah. And when you talk of equilibrium, there has to be two sides to be equating something. Yeah. So if I don't have a difference, then there are two ways. Either you have a I am one of the first possibly employees in Reliance who has a mat or I have two pairs of clothes and I have to sleep in my cabin for 20 minutes. Ke liye. Irrespective of that feeling, my boss I, na I, what people think. So in one of these episodes, two of my colleagues have started sitting in my room, my cabin. They were bitching. I didn't hear that. I had my earplugs plugged on, Guruji was talking and I was ready. Then they suddenly realized some head appearing behind <laughs> the table. They had a oh moment, oh God, he heard all. So I told them very clearly, even in case I would have heard all. It doesn't matter to me because there's something called as sir to your answer, is a lot of compassion. So suppose you are a mother and one day your kid comes up and he says, mom, I hate you for what you did to me. Does the kid really mean that or will the mom really take that to heart? So I'm gradually trying to reach a spot where anybody who comes and gives me this kind of a feeling, I still see that person. Immediately, I brain make an incident in which I start seeing that person as a three-year-old child of mine who's cribbing about. He had papa to asa karte hai, mamma asa karte hai. And suddenly the level of hormones goes down. It's no longer a vengeance. But why this happens? Because the state in which I enter into every morning in one and a half hours of Kriya, it gives me so much of energy that it's like somebody slaps you, know, you just smile at you, like, what did you feel? You are in that state. And the day you start doing, I don't have to explain it, it happens automatically. 
राइट यू हैव दैट आपका स्पीच रेट स्लो हो जाता है आपका ईटिंग स्लो हो जाता है राइट योर एंड देर इज अ ब्यूटिफुल कनेक्टेड फैक्टर हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू हर्ड दिस लाइन कॉल उसने अपनी आखिरी सांस ली हैव यू हर्ड दैट सो वन ऑफ द विचित्र थ्योरी इज सेज दैट देर इज अ नंबर ऑफ काउंट ऑफ ब्रेथ्स यू हैव बीन गिवन इन दिस लाइफ राइट नाउ इन द स्टेट ऑफ दोज फाइव इमोशंस विच इज द रॉद्र फ्यूरियस एंड एक्स वाइज ई यू आर ब्रीदिंग रेट इंक्रीज इज अ लॉट सो दैट मीन्स पर मिनट यू आर कंज्यूमिंग मोर नंबर ऑफ ब्रेथ्स राइट बट इफ यू आर इन अ राइट एंड साइड क्वारेंट विच इज दोज इमोशंस ऑफ जॉय शांत भाव आपका ब्रीदिंग रेट बहुत स्लो हो जाता है दैट मीन्स माई कोटा the fuel quota which i would possibly consume guru ji <laughs> so the fuel quota i have which was meant to last for let's say 10 kilometers or let's say 70 kilometers i'm just narrating 70 years of my life will now last to 90 so there is something called as a concept called as a langhanam so there are seven type of langhanam which is slow speaking slow breathing slow eating slow walking this is called as langhanam so that's all taught in art of living whenever you have time to explore this and bahut beautiful hota hai it's like aapko lagta hai aap halka sa you know uh, uh, in youtube you have this 1x 2x speed so aap 0.5x mein operate kar rahe hote ho at least which is its own part so it's good to sometimes not have reactions to everything कि उधर आग लग गया है उधर इसने ये बोल दिया है सो आई हैव केप्ट इन माय रूम ना डीप ब्रीथ सो कोई भी मुझे आके कोई कंप्लेन करता है मेरे कॉलीग का सो ऐसे स्टैंड हेयर मैंने रूम में कुछ स्वीट्स रखे हुए हैं गिव दम वाटर एंड ऐसे जस्ट एक दो डीप ब्रीथ लो अब बताओ अब क्या प्रॉब्लम है ठीक है फिर सेकेंड प्रॉब्लम है आपके पास आए मीन्स उसका सॉल्यूशन होगा तभी आपके पास प्रॉब्लम आया है यू गेट दैट राइट ऐसा तो किसी ने मुझे जिन्हें बोला नहीं ना वो दैट एट मर्चेंट्स हु गॉट एबडक्टेड हु आर गिवन डेथ पेनल्टी इन कतार विजय प्लीज उनको छुड़ा के लेकर आओ वो मेरे पास नहीं आया प्रॉब्लम समबडी टोल्ड मी कि मेरा यू आई नहीं पहुँचा है टाइम पे दैट इज समथिंग विच आई कैन सॉल्व यू गेट दैट राइट सो दिस इज द स्लोनेस ओवरऑल विच यू विल गेट एंड वाई द स्लोनेस बिकॉज यू हैव क्लीन योर गार्बेज मतलब यू डोंट हैव दैट प्रेशर कुकर बर्निंग अप इन साइड ना यू हैव लेस ऑफ द लेफ्ट इन साइड डेटा इट इज ऑल्सो रिक्वायर्ड आई एम नॉट सींग इट्स नॉट रिक्वायर्ड दे आर डेज यू रिक्वायर द रॉद्र रूप बट वो दैट इज द ममता वाला रॉद्र रूप यू डोंट नीड टू रियली फील इट इज लाइक यू नो वेन किड अनसरी ने बर्न आउट द साड़ी ऑफ मदर एंड माँ इज प्लानिंग यू नो वेंजेंस लेगा मैं बच्चे से <laughs> उसको सात जन्म तक याद रहेगा माँ डजेंट डू दैट नीदर फादर विल डू दैट एग्रीड इट्स ओनली आउटसाइड सो इफ यू सी मोस्ट ऑफ दिस आइकोनोग्राफी इन इंडियन माइथोलॉजी इज दैट ओनली विच इज द काली माँ स्वरूप वो हमारी माँ भी आती है कभी काली माँ बनती है ना आप चंडी बन गए हो राइट डज इट रियली मीन दैट कि भस्म कर दूंगी तेरे को मैं राइट नो सर आई होप आई पार्टली आंसर योर ओके थैंक्स इंक्रीज द एनर्जी एंड देन अलाउ द डिले टू हैपन फॉर एनी प्रोसेसिंग विच इज हैपनिंग इन योर डिसीजन मेकिंग दस लंघन I think some of our students will relate to that, and my colleagues definitely. When on a day-to-day -day basis, people come up, sir, kya kare? Then a colleague comes in, ye kyu kar raha hai? I think humne kabi na kabi bola ye, sit down, breathe. So thank you so much to. In last part, I'll just connect to his part as okay, well. Okay, yeah, please. Uh, the one in the back. Uh, so you know that we are 68 percent to 70 percent water. You know which planet affects the water? is a satellite technically moon right you know high tide low tide right so there is a survey which was conducted which says the maximum entries into asylums happen on full moon day because the body was totally affected that's why the word lunar and lunatic <laughs> you see some simile now every moon cycle changes two and a half days so if you are abs absolutely upset with some issue bahut gussa aa raha hai for a loved one or for an unknown one Allow it two and a half days to settle. Timer लगा लो I know it's very difficult because we are impulsive. आप भी जाके बताऊँगा भी जाके मजा आ चुकाऊँगा Right? And that is what is leading to most of this, you know, issue, issues between people to people. Right? Though full of anger is creating another new baby out of anger. Right? It's, it can't happen. So allow it for two and a half days. Then two and a half days later you suddenly feel नहीं तो छोड़ देते हैं It's not that सीवर ओ ई मेल नहीं भेजती हूँ या नहीं भेजता right so that's one of the dictates in my team uh, and i'm very proud to say that uh, every problem which is narrated by any business one i tell them they are not meditating you are the one who are meditating feel yourself lucky right try and help them 
try and bring a smile to their face. So that's one of the words which I've given to everybody in my team. There is no politics happening. We'll use email as one of the last resorts. Sometimes we do use like documentation and diplomacy. I'm also teaching them a lot on uh, inspired from S. Jay Shankar, the diplomacy of corporate governance and survival, right? Uh, it's not that easy because to put a mat for 20 minutes in Reliance office and do yoga nidra, it's, it's I think Padmashri milna chahiye, but it's a different thing. <laughs> right, okay. Sir, I'll end? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, thanks so much, Vijay. It was really lovely. Once more. Okay.
Uh, we will be starting in a few minutes. Uh, we have a lovely audience here. New chairs are coming in. So the people who are okay with sitting on the floor, please make ourselves home. Others can take the chairs. Namaste. Uh, welcome back and a uh, very warm welcome to our special guest today, Professor Uday Kumar. Please, a big round of applause. <laughs> to begin with, I must say it is so good to see an audience which is spilling over the seats. Thank you so much for coming in such huge numbers. Let's start without any further ado. Today we have with us Professor Dr. D. Uday Kumar. He is the Associate Professor and Head of Department in Design of IIT Guwahati. He is among those very few designers whose work undeniably touches every single citizen of this country and is recognized the world over. Of course, the design of his universal symbol for the Indian rupee. He has completed his PhD in design from IDC IIT Bombay. He has a Master's degree in Visual Communication and a Bachelor's degree in Architecture. He has worked as a senior designer and then as a design head in the monthly magazine Intelligent Computing, CHIP. His areas of interest include visual communication, architecture, design research with special focus on Tamil typography. A sports enthusiast and a nature lover, Professor Uday strongly believes in himself and certain fundamental principles of righteousness, equality, love, trust, cleanliness and discipline. That's a very interesting mix of uh, principles. Uh, I would now request uh, Professor Kumar to please uh, come to the front. And I request Dr. Sharmila Sinha to felicitate our esteemed guest. Thank you so much, Dr. Sinha. Uday, sir, this is the stage is all yours. A very good afternoon to one and all. Uh, I am thankful to Karnavati University, President, Provost, uh, Deans of Institutions, Head of the Departments, Faculty Members and Staff, 
So thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to be here at Ahmedabad Design Week 5.0. And uh, I'm particularly thankful to the student uh, coordinators and volunteers, especially Mansi Jindal. He, she's been accompanying me from the day one for all my requirements. Thank you so much. And also the other volunteers. There were two people who picked me up from the airport. I'm sorry I forgot their names, but I'm really thankful to them. And also there were a couple of students at the hotel receiving us and uh, showing their warm hospitality. I was really uh, impressed and thank you so much. And maybe you can give a big round of applause for the students for making this very successful event. Yeah, so. Yeah, so with this, uh, so let me begin my presentation. So uh, I do not know whether you know the background of how it all started. So just to give you a glimpse of how it started. So this uh, design of Indian rupee symbol was a competition floated by Government of India and Reserve Bank of India in uh, 2009. At that time, I was doing my PhD at Industrial Design Center, IIT Bombay. I was almost nearing completion, so I was writing my thesis and uh, waiting for my defense to happen. So like any enthusiastic designer, uh, I took part in the competition. And then uh, for a very long time, uh, we did not get to know about it. So the competition was announced in March, or around February, March 2009. So the deadline was in June, July, uh, around that. And for a very long time, we did not hear from them. And suddenly in December 2009, I received uh, a letter from the government that stating that uh, I was uh, being chosen as one of the five finalists for the uh, rupee symbol design, and we were asked to come over to uh, Delhi uh, in the Reserve Bank of India headquarters, and then we made a presentation. So we were asked to make a 10-minute presentation. Uh, so that's when I also got to meet all the other finalists, five finalists who were also there in Delhi, uh, December 5th to be precise, so the date when I made my presentation there. I could not see the other's presentation, though we shared our works, because it was a closed presentation, and there was a seven-member jury. So there were two from Reserve Bank of India, one was the Deputy Governor of RBI, and then two from Finance Ministry, and three from Repetitive Design Institute. Professor Anil Sinha from NID was also there. They were the jury who uh, evaluated our designs. And uh, so at that time also, at the end of the, like I said, it was closed presentations. I could not get to see others' work. Uh, at the end of the presentation, so we all were called together and there were discussions. So we asked them how, when we will get to know uh, the results and everything. And this is what they said that time. So they said that uh, they are only a recommending committee. So they will kind of rank all our five works in one to five. And this ranking will be sent to the cabinet ministers. So the cabinet ministers will be oath, uh, will take a oath. So it again, so even the f fifth rank uh, uh, participant can also come at the first. Yeah. So they can select anybody from the five. But the committee only recommends the five in the order of the rankings. The cabinet ministers will make a choice. And then it will go to the prime minister and the finance minister. Uh, then uh, Dr. Manmohan Singh was the prime minister. So, so they will choose the final design. Even they also have the choice to kind of make, uh, so in spite of all the recommendations that goes. And so finally, my design was chosen. And this is the same presentation that I've been making for the past, say, 14 years, since 2010. So it was supposed to be. <laughs> I know it's been recorded, and it's gone live on YouTube. But I'm sorry if some of you have already seen the presentation. It's going to be a repetition. But yeah, so nevertheless. So I don't have any other presentation to kind of showcase the design and explain how I went about designing it. So yeah, so this is the presentation. And also, like I said, they did not announce the result very quickly. So July 15th, 2010 is when the, the then broadcasting minister, uh, Ms. Amika Soni, announced this live on the television that my symbol was being uh, chosen. I also did not know. Uh, so again, I was in IIT Bombay at that time. There were a lot of press coverage. They all came to my hostel, and they were just telling me and informing me that your design has been chosen. So that's how I got to know. And then rest, again, it, it's everywhere it was there. Yeah, yeah. so let me go ahead. And uh, so the presentation. Uh, as you know, this is the rupee symbol, yeah. so, which is now in implementation. Uh, so, yeah, so during the competitions, uh, 
there, there was a lot of a brief, yeah, there were certain guidelines to be followed. If you have really closely observed the presentation since yesterday, so many of them kind of really uh, pointed this, that uh, you need to kind of understand the brief, client's brief, as much as possible, even Ankur, I think in today's presentation, he also kind of mentioned, uh, I do not know whether you got to attend the presentations. In fact, all the speakers kind of constantly keep on repeatedly telling that uh, whenever the client gives you a problem statement, you need to read through it and understand it as much as possible. So, uh, so in the competition, so one of the guidelines was that the Indian rupee symbol should reflect our Indian culture, tradition, and its ethos. So then I kind of focused on that one particular concept and tried to kind of bring out that element of Indian Indianness into the symbol. So I did a lot of research. I spent about two months uh, more than that trying to identify a symbol that would really reflect our country. So I'll tell you the challenges over the slides and uh, why the what challenges they were. So since I was doing my research in Tamil typography, so my PhD was in Tamil typography. Uh, so I tried to study various scripts in, in our country and understand them. So then I felt like script was the, one of the best visual element that reflected uh, the country. So I chose the Devanagari script. You can see the letter R I chose. And then I also had this Latin script R. So I tried to blend both the R and R together. It's kind of an abbreviation. So why I choose the Devanagari script is primarily because it's one of the unique scripts in the world in terms of its writing system. Unlike any other scripts, if you look at Devanagari scripts, it will be hanging from the top line, whereas all the other scripts will be sit on the baseline. So if you are familiar with typography, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. So that's one element. Uh, uh, so you have this uh, element, which is the top line, which is called the Shirorika, which is a consist consistent visual element across all the letter forms in the Devanagari script, which is also a very unique element, which you would not find like that in any other scripts. Uh, so, trying to, so these are the things that actually kind of uh, gave me this idea that it kind of reflects our Indianness. For example, if I give you a Latin a name and then ask you to kind of make it into a Desi version or a Hindi version, what typically people do is that they'll draw this top line, right? So in capital letters A or B or C, if you put a top line, then it becomes kind of a Desi version of that Latin. Lat, uh, Desi, uh, yeah, so Indianized version of this Latin script, right? So that's why I try to kind of, that kind of gives you this understanding of what, uh, reinforces the understanding of India into that. So then I also kind of had this uh, Roman letter R, which also expands to rupiah. So rupee, rupiah and rupees both kind of denote the currency sign. In a way, it's kind of an abbreviation. And uh, so I looked at the forms of both the letter forms uh, the, the, in Devanagari and the Latin. So, so I tried to blend them together. Uh, and that's the reason being that so the symbol is not just going to be used by the Indian nationals. It's going to be a universal symbol. So you need to be able to create something which even the people around the world should be able to understand what this stands for. So, so in order to make it more comprehensible for a larger audience, not just for the Indian nationals, so I tried to kind of blend the Devanagari and the Latin scripts together. Yeah. So that way people can understand the, the idea, the concept behind the symbol. Uh, so I did not leave it there, so I did a lot of other things which uh, conceptually uh, I tried to kind of portray the Indian flag uh, into the symbol. If you look at these uh, two lines there. Uh, so can you tell me a reason why a flag has to be there as a part of a symbol? Any idea? Yeah. Sorry? It's representing the nation, definitely. It actually I, uh, represents the country. But, but yeah, another thing is that if you look at our country, it's very diverse, right? It's so diverse that it's very hard to kind of really pinpoint one particular symbol and attach it to our country, right? If you look at uh, our country, both in, in, in many multiple ways, yeah, whether you take a script or language or community or geography or flora or fauna, climate, everything is different. No, if you come to North East, the, the landscape is completely different as compared to what is here, right? And uh, also the, the way people behave and the culture. So everything is completely different, yeah? So our country is in the world in itself, right? So it's so diverse and there are so many things that happens and it has this rich uh, tradition and diversities. So how do you kind of put them all together, yeah? So, 
So flag is the only thing which kind of binds us all together as one nation, right? So I wanted to create a symbol that is unbiased, which is, brings all people together and, and such that we all feel proud of it. And we'll, so we feel patriotic about our flag, right? So when you see the flag or when we hear the national anthem, so there is a sensation within us which kind of really makes you feel proud of our own country at the background and everything, right? So I wanted to kind of reinforce that, again, bring that element of Indianness uh, into it. Uh, so remember the concept, uh, the guidelines, which is, says that the symbol should reflect our Indian tradition and culture. So I was constantly trying to find out visual clues, how I can kind of bring that element uh, aspects into the design. So the flag was one thing which represents every Indian. It's to do with the common man. And that's why without, so I, I try to kind of portray that and it also, I try to put it in such a way that it's as if flying high in the, uh, in the symbol itself, yeah. So to create an unbiased uh, symbol. And uh, so it also represents this arithmetic sign, which is an equal to sign. Uh, so uh, one, it is also to kind of denote a, a balanced and a stable economy. So if you look at in 2008 and also in later years, there were a lot of countries' economy where they have, uh, went into crisis. So I want our economy to be very stable and also strong and moving forward and growing. Yeah. So no country's economy should kind of really fall back, right? So that's not good. So I wanted to kind of denote that symbolically through this sign. And not just that, but if you look at the currency, the, the idea of economy, the idea of commerce, starts from this give and take policy, right? If you look at the barter system, that's how it all started, right? The transaction, what that we talk about. So in the earlier days, so we have this barter systems where if I give you a commodity of, say, for example, one kilo of rice, maybe you will give you equal value of two kilo, two kilo of maybe a sugar or something else, right? So it's an equal value system that we exchange, yeah? Then over a time, then we kind of found a common denomination and common currency which you use for transaction of buying any equal commodity, yeah? So if I give you one rupees, you will give me one rupees worth of chocolate or biscuit or whatever it is, yeah? So this equal to is kind of denotes this idea of what the commerce is, yeah? So that's what another aspects to it. And uh, so I also studied a lot of other currency signs around the world and understand the history and uh, the concept behind it. Uh, so, so the symbol looks in similarity to the rest of the currency signs. So maybe the next slide will show you a better, clear picture. So, it, so I've just only put few of the signs, uh, whatever that could be accommodated within the slide. But there are a lot more other currency signs which I've collected and understood what they meant and what they stand for. So here you can kind of see very much see that it looks in harmonious with the rest of the currency sign. So uh, in fact, this was one of the criticism later on after I won. There are a few people who said that uh, this design is not original and it was just like a copy. It's kind of an imitation of the rest of the other currency signs, like a pound and a dollar. Then I was happy to kind of uh, know about the criticism because it was meant to be like that. It is not something which is original. Of course, it is original in its meaning, but in terms of visual appearance, it was in similarity to the rest of the sign. Uh, the primary reason being that, so I wanted to create a symbol which is associated with currency sign and not as anything else. Yeah? So I'm sure you have learned about semiotics, yeah? semantics, semiotics, syntactics, and so on and so forth. Yeah? So, uh, study of visual signs. So in semiotics, you have this certain symbols which represent certain meaning, right? So in that sense, so I wanted to create a visual sign which is not a traffic sign or a corporate identity or a logo or anything, but a currency sign. And for it to be a currency sign, it has to have the same visual grammar as the rest of the currency sign. Otherwise, people will kind of get confused with it. So I wanted to kind of create the similarities and ensure that it looks just like other currency so that when immediately when people see that, okay, it's rupees, yeah, so not anything else. So that's why it looks like the uh, rest of the currency. So the, I found the, the language, the visual grammar is that you will find uh, there is a letter which is cut across by a, a line, either in a vertical, horizontal, or diagonal manner. Yeah, so that's the grammar that a currency sign actually follows. So across the world, all the currency signs are almost similar. Yeah, so they, are, they don't have any deviations. So I don't want to create something which is very radical, which people have to kind of find it difficult to understand and comprehend, but something which is very familiar, which is similar, which is just exists. Yeah, so that's the idea. And uh, I also used the existing visual forms, yeah, so because it's important that if people are familiar with the forms, it becomes difficult to kind of 
learn after it's implemented. Yeah? So I'll give you an example here. Uh, for example, in a crowded place, if you see a friend, say in a crowded railway station or an airport or any other public places, yeah. So when you see somebody whom you are familiar with, your friend or your relative or anybody, we will try to say hi, hello, and make a conversation, right? That's because you are familiar with that person. But if it is a stranger, I don't think you'll go simply go make a conversation unless you are an extroverted person and you want to make a conversation, right? So familiarity kind of helps you to kind of make that communications and make it easy for adaptations, right? So then I kind of thought about it. So having this familiar forms will make it easy for people to adapt when the symbol is implemented. Remember all of those things happened, I mean, I was thinking before even it was uh, accepted and selected. Yeah. So R, many people are familiar, and capital R is also a familiar visual form, so you don't have to learn newly to kind of understand what it is. And it is also helpful in terms of the writing system is concerned. So when you have to kind of write it, because symbols also should be in, in a written form, yeah? So when you go to the bank, you will write the rupee symbol and the amount, right? Or any other places, wherever it, you have to deal with money. So in that sense, when you have to write, it becomes CC because you already know how to write letter R or capital letter R. So you don't have to do this, make this extra effort to learn the symbol how to write it, right? So that's why this familiarity and also using the existing symbols to kind of create the design. A simplicity is also was one of my primary criteria. So I did a lot of iterations, so many options, and everything was kind of eliminated, and then I kind of refined and so on and so forth. Though I'm not showing you all my other iterations, but the only the final design, I'm sharing it with you. So it has only few elements, so that so the uh, cognitive load is also very less. It's very easy for people to kind of quickly recognize what the symbol is, and also even in the return form, it's very easy for people to write. Yeah. Uh, again, since my background is from typography, so I kind of looked at it uh, as a type design exercise and looked at it from each and every millimeter point of view in terms of the angle, the degree, the curves, and everything. And this also was a lot of iterations I did. You only get to see the final one. Uh, so I was so concerned and also I, uh, so, uh, so I was so concerned and also I, uh, so this also brings the visual aesthetics to it. So the functionality and visual aesthetics is of equal importance. So many times, uh, since many students are there, so many times students think that, so you need to kind of fulfill the function and then later on add the, the aesthetics to it and make it more beautiful. And that should not be the case. Yeah? The function itself should ensure that the beauty of the design comes through. Yeah? So you need to kind of integrate it seamlessly instead of just looking at it as a post factor. Yeah? Just you design it and then trying to kind of beautify things and make your design appealing. It's not the way to approach the design. But the function itself, the way in which you work on the design itself should create something which is very beautiful in nature, not like something which you do post uh, the design. So, so this was, again, my, it was always in my mind and consciously I was trying to work on each and every finer detail. So if you look at the lines, uh, the top two lines, you can see it's like slanted on the right side. So I kind of worked on it with the, uh, typically the ends are called terminals. I had a rounded terminals, I had an uh, opposite angle, and I had a vertical terminal, and I had a chamfer terminal. Uh, so there were so many options. And then once you change that, then you also have to change the joinery with the curve, where the curve and the angular line joins. Again, that also changes. So it was like a constant changing of things. One, if you change, then that you have to, so the permutation and commutation was kind of too much, yeah. So I tried to kind of work on constantly on this and try to arrive at this, finally arrive at this one. So there is a trick in this one, though I would, would want the students to kind of figure out what is the trick, because typically if you look at calligraphy, the Devanagari script is written in a different form and English is refer, uh, written in a different calligraphic uh, style, yeah, if you look at the broad nib, yeah, so. So I also shot several short videos of how people will write the symbol. Uh, because that's that's when uh, that's what is going to happen when it's implemented, right? So though this video might not clip uh, play because I don't think it's embedded. I'm sorry. It's just like a 20 seconds, 10 seconds video. So I shot several of such as smaller videos to just find out how people write it. Yeah. Uh, so, like I said, so I was also looking at the finer details, at the visual balance, visual aesthetics. I know it is a very tiny symbol, but I, I spent a lot of time trying to kind of understand it at, at a very minutest detail. Uh, so, 
the length also is precise. And if you look at the dimensions, if you look at the stroke thickness and also the space between uh, them, it is in proportion to the national flag. Yeah? So the national flag, the, the tricolor flag, there is a proportion in which the width and the length of the flag has to be, and also the strips, how much. So there is a ratio. So it all corresponds to that kind of a ratio. So do, do, you don't see it, but I'm just explaining it. So since you're all designers, hopefully it should be helpful. Yeah, so this is something which I did uh, again uh, before uh, during the uh, participating the, when I was participating in the competition. So though there was no brief on this one, so I told the committee that uh, if at all you want to come up with a sign for the paisa, so you don't have to float a competition. It'll be logistically another big task for you. So a paisa symbol can be already there, so you can make use of this one. So I kind of anticipated this and suggested them this could be in harmonies with the rupee symbol itself, because you have this dollar and cents, and there are so many denominations which all have their own signs, visual signs, right? So I gave the symbol for even for the paisa in along with this one. But they said that we'll think over it. After that, not much happened, but at least I'm thankful the rupee symbol is there, so. Yeah. So the numerals are the typical place where you will find the symbol uh, with, yeah, so this is with the Indian numerals, and this is with the Arabic numerals. Again, I tried with the different typefaces, different fonts. This is uh, Rotis uh, 51. Uh, Rotis is a very beautiful font designed by Otil Lescher, a German designer. Um, uh, so I also tried to look at it from the technological point of view, so where it will be in the keyboard and how it will appear, how encoding should be done. Of course, I'm not an expert, so this was just only a preliminary understanding, so based on my basic understanding to say, yeah, so where the Unicode position will be. Uh, so this was suggestive. Uh, so like I said, so there were several things that went into the design of the symbol. Yeah? There were so many meanings I wanted to kind of embed into the dis uh, symbol, yeah? which I, I explained it earlier. Yeah? Uh, so why you need this symbol? Yeah? So there are several other countries which also use rupees as their uh, currency. Uh, so if we'll take Indonesia, Mauritius, and so on. So now that we have a symbol, it kind of distinguishes itself from the rest of the other nations which also use the rupee. Yeah. So you also see the denominations which they use. So Indonesia uses RP, but typically we used to write RS yeah, earlier as an abbreviation of the rupees. So I, I did not stop there, but I, I went ahead and uh, I also uh, uh, find, found a means, I um, mean, uh, various applications where a common man will see in, in his or her day-to-day -day, day -day life, yeah? So where all the symbol will look like. So I picked up examples, again, these were all selected examples, it was not like randomly chosen. So I picked a lot of examples, there are some which is not there, some I put it in the presentation. So depending on the printing surfaces, uh, technology, and uh, various, various things. Uh, so this was on a tin, uh, how, on a packaging, how it look like and different color combinations. And this was on a dot matrix printer, how it looked like, because in, still in post offices, they use dot matrix printer. So whether the symbol will be legible, readable, or not. So I was trying to focus. And based on this, you, I, I went back to my design. If you have looked at the construction drawings earlier, I, in the earlier slides. So I can try to modify the angles and uh, the thickness and so on and so forth. So, so applications of these examples, again, so this is in the uh, medicines. There are two informations which is very vital. One is the expiry date and also the price which we often look at when you buy a medicine. So this is kind of a stamping technique. So when you stamp, the ink actually spreads. Again, at a smaller size, the legibility goes off. Yeah, it becomes a blotched uh, text. So you will not be able to identify what the letter forms is or the, or the text is. So, so again, based on this, then the spacing and everything was also kind of modified and fine-tuned. Uh, in a complex background, how it looked like. So, so I just kind of edited all those images and then put the rupee symbol there, along with the same design, type design, that actually is there. Yeah, so uh, again, similarly, uh, in uh, postage, uh, where uh, stamping is called the franking technique, so how it looked like. And also in keyboards. So this was, again, my suggestion. So it's in the numeral six. Uh, but the newer keyboards, if you find nowadays, it will be there besides uh, number four. Along with the dollar sign, you'll find the rupee symbol. But this was my suggestion. Again, I did a basic research. So b above six, you have this upper uh, arrow, yeah, which is often not used by the general public. Mostly programmers and coders use them, and which is also be you can get them by the combination of other keys. Yeah. So I thought, okay, why not replace that and put the numerals 
numeral six there because all the other spe special characters more fun, more, most often general public will use. Yeah. So uh, this is the railway ticket. So uh, the old and the new ticket, you will find the difference, how it will look like once the symbol is implemented. Again, these are all touch points where a common man will come in front, I mean, in, in touch with the uh, design. Uh, so one other thing about itself in the typewriter. So if you t do the strike through, you will get the rupee symbol. Yeah? So in that sense, it was compatible even to the older technologies and also future and the current technologies. Yeah? So in that sense, it takes care of every, every medium that is possible in uh, reproducing the symbol. So these are uh, bank uh, slips. Yeah? So typically we, we see them, yeah? uh, the rupee sign. I also looked at in LEDs, so in the digital mediums, how it will kind of look at and whether the legibility will still hold or the shape and form. So some examples. And also in smaller sizes, looking at uh, stamps as a good example for the size uh, comparison. And so this is in the checkbooks. So typically RS. Uh, is be, it, it will be written, RS and RU will be written. I kind of replaced it with the symbol. Uh, this is the most common place where you will find the rupee symbol, which is the price tag. So when you go purchase some materials, you will often find this price tag. So you can see how harmonious it is with the other currency signs, with the dollar and the pound. Yeah. A symbol should uh, signify a meaningful thought. Meaning to a symbol is like soul to a body. Without soul, the body is nothing. Without deeper, sensible, and thought-provoking meaning, the symbol is needless. This symbol truly symbolizes our country, our tradition, our nation's economy, and its currency. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, yeah. so, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> the website does not work, so you don't have to search for that. So, but yeah, uh, before I conclude, uh, I would like to thank all my uh, uh, school teachers. Uh, from uh, Lashat Lane uh, Residential Junior College. So I studied in a boarding school right from my first standard uh, till my 12th standard. So it's a boarding school in Chennai. I'm very much thankful to all my uh, school teachers and all the staff who really made me the person that I am, that I'm standing today. And uh, I'm also uh, thankful to all my professors from School of Architecture and Planning who really made me understand what a space is. They taught me architecture design and a lot more and creativity and so on and so forth. And I'm also thankful to all my professors and staff from Industrial Design Center, IIT Bombay. They really opened up a whole new world of what design is. And I understood how design works and how it functions. And I got to know about typography, type design, and many things. So I'm very much thankful to all my teachers who have been very much instrumental. I'm thankful to them for all my life for what they did to me. And also I'm thankful to my parents, uh, my friends, uh, my mother, and my Father, they never questioned me in whatever that I did, and they gave me the freedom to choose what I wanted to do, and uh, I'm really thankful to them and my parents and my, f uh, my friends and my brothers and sisters. So thank you so much, and thanks for this patiently listening to me. Questions? I think it was quite succinct and lucid, but yeah, Karam. Sir, well, thanks for retail of uh, rupee symbols. But Thank you. Uh, I want to know ki why are should uh, two clips from Unicode or uh, Unicode Concentorium? Mm. Uh, why are putting the two clips? Okay. Rupee symbol. Uh, Unicode value is two zero a eight mm. and uh, other values. Mm. So, what is the meaning of two clips? for a one rupee symbol? Uh, so I was looking at this in a, as an option, either this or that. Of course, like I said, I'm not an expert in this Unicode and the uh, keyboard encoding. Just, just my basic understanding. I was just suggesting that probably if this, if not uh, in the Unicode, this position, maybe this could be by the government of India, uh, how they kind of defined the keyboard position. Yeah. Okay. That's actually, basic understanding. So Actually, uh, I am thir um, around about 35 years working mm. in the typography type design mm. but uh, mere ko ye samajh mein nahi aaya aaj tak ki jitna bhi countries ka symbols hai sabko ek glyphs diya hai ek value di gayi hai lekin mm. indian rupees symbol ko do value di gayi hai maine unicode consortium ko bhi likha ki what is the reason but i think importance mm. of mm. our 
मतलब अवर दारुपी सिंबल सो दिस द यूजिंग इन द पब्लिकेशन वेब पब्लिकेशन एंड प्रिंट पब्लिकेशन एंड यूजिंग द बैनरी फॉर्मेट सो आई थिंक पब्लिश फॉर द टू हाउस इन टू हाउस टू ग्लिप्स टू यूनिकोड वैल्यूज ए जीरो फोर एट और टू एट ए टू सॉरी आई डोंट नो अबाउट द डिफरेंट बट ए अदर वैल्यूज आई थिंक दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द इंडियन इकोनॉमी एंड थैंक्स मिस्टर दैक थैंक यू थैंक यू रोहिला जी any other questions please we have time students faculty members anyone it it was the same situation even during the presentation so what happened is that uh, like i said this was a 10 minute presentation and uh, so we finalists were called one by one to make a presentation so everybody took more than half an hour or one hour and they came back so i was the only guy went and came back in 15 minutes so <laughs> i was just so worried that i don't know either they understood or they did not they did not ask me any questions just only one question at the end because i, I think at the end i made one more slide i think oh no so okay. that slide is not there professor anil sinha asked me the only question nobody else asked me any questions so he asked i put the symbol in color yeah if, if i i think you you saw one slide yeah pre uh, slide so he asked me where do you see a symbol in a color form no i actually i did not have have an answer i said if you wanted to be in color then this is the option that i am trying to provide yeah but usually it's in mono color you will never find the symbol in multi colors yeah so that was the only question and after that i came out yeah so the rest of them spent like really 45 minutes one hour and they had lot of documents and they came so i was little worried the same year i don't know either you should have understood us <laughs> or it should be other way around yeah thank you i think this one sir is uh, yeah. a question there uh, sir uh, the font uh, the character design yes would be changing with different fonts yes so how did you uh, plan or foresee how the uh, character design will adapt to the different fonts and all of that yeah so i i try to keep it as neutral as possible and as basic as possible so that it gives rooms for the type designer to kind of make bring their own characteristics into this form yeah say for example letter a or letter b or c so they have a very basic skeletal structure on top of it people any type designer would want to create his bring in their own visual characteristics to the type so i created the skeletal structure in such a simplified manner so that it helps the any designers to come up with their own versions of the symbol for their own type faces according to their own design yeah so i did not add any decorative elements or anything so that it becomes very difficult for anybody who is going to redesign or design for their own place because i know that this is going to be a type face or i mean going to be part of a type face right so then you should know how you need to design for it so uh, i had a question uh, can you explain the construction part of the symbol uh yeah so construction is one of, first of first thing was i wanted to keep the proportion of the flag especially the top two lines yeah I, that is something which i was uh, so that was also was little bit of a botheration for me because it was also too close yeah and too high and it becomes top heavy and the bottom was there's lot more negative space in the bottom so i tried to keep on playing but since i had this concept of indian flag i didn't want to deviate from the flag so then that becomes my constraint and i tried to kind of improvise on the constraint and then adjust my curves such that the curve and the joint I, how much up and down has to be there so i don't have too much of a curve so that the top i also has like a lot of uh, more negative space and it not a shorter uh, bottom part so these were aspects which i was constantly thinking while i was designing yeah so the flag kind of that was all top part is all set 
and the bottom is what I kind of try to improve so that I can visually balance it with the top portion and also the width of the symbol, yeah? So it was a lot of iterations I had to go through and it is solely based on my own visual aesthetics and my visual understanding. What I found it, okay, this is interesting, this is visually appealing and so on. Then I froze it, yeah? So, and also I took a lot of feedback. I took uh, feedback from people and asked them what they found and whether it's interesting. So everybody was, uh, they found it quite appealing, so they did not have any issues. So if they had any given any feedback, then accordingly I would have further modified and iterated on it. Yeah, welcome. Uh, hi, Uday, this side. Yeah, hi. Shriji. Yeah. Uh, Uday, we are proud of you, that's one factor. Thank you. And uh, I think we rarely had in the country celebrity designers. <clears throat> and I think uh, you gave us that space that there is a possibility of someone like you, you, you know, whether I or you know, somebody like us can be here. So the question is, there's two parts of the story. One part is actually reaching the point of creation of this baby that mm. you have done, which is a rupee symbol. The other part was the adoption part how the baby came about in the society, hmm. what were the institutions it went to. I would really love to know what were your stories post the decision when government announced they'll take up this decision. How did they involve you? Uh, what was the journey like working with the government machinery, Indian railways? I don't know how does it really happen. It's not like you gave one file, was it like, and they asked you to go back and sleep, take the money? Or was it like you be part of this committee, handhold us, Mm -hmm. What is that somebody has to do? There are a lot of learnings. If just in one minute or two minutes uh, you'd like to okay. speak about that. Actually, I'm on recording, so I <laughs> just don't know whether I have to say, but yeah. So uh, whatever I gave the, uh, the design is just the same. The, all the implementation is based on what the initial drawing was, whatever the construction drawing, whatever I submitted during the uh, competition, the same design has been implemented. There's no iterations, no changes after that. So most of the communications was through speed post. So I was not there anywhere. So all the prize money also, they just sent me through speed post and I'm just left like that. So I have to surrender all my copyright and everything to the government of India. Then only they in fact released the prize money, which I donated to an organization in Hyderabad. It's called Prajwala. So, so it works for anti-trafficking of women and children. So I went there and gave them, and so Sunita Krishna is the person who really runs the organization. So that's the only connection. After that, I'm nowhere part of any further discussions uh, with the government or anyone else. Yeah. So even the corporate, everything is uh, the government of India. So I can only claim, I've been telling the, uh, this also, so I can only claim that I designed the rupee symbol, and that's it. So <laughs> nothing more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Sir, for the benefits of the students, yes. could you please highlight what a lot of amount of hard work you have put so that it becomes they aspire like you. In 15 minutes, we see so what a great wonder proud we are proud of. But we must also know the students, especially the hard work, how you devoted yourself so that whenever they take any job, they could keep in mind and aspire to achieve. Yeah. Oh, sure. Please highlight yeah. that point. Yeah, I spent a lot of time with this. Yeah, so because I know this is of a national importance. You no, know? so uh, not necessarily that any competition. I give the fullest, my uh, best of my abilities. Yeah, so I did a lot of research. I looked at coinages. Uh, I looked at Kanishka period. I looked at uh, symbols. I looked at Indus Valley civilization seals. Though these are all not there in the slides, but uh, there were a lot of study behind it. I did a lot of research. And like I said, my PhD also was uh, helpful in the process, yeah? so I got to understand various scripts. In fact, once I uh, went to Tamil Nadu, the then Chief Minister, Mr. Karnanidhi was there, so I had an appointment with him and I went to his house, residence, and showed his, the work. So, of course, they are DMK party, they know how their uh, reactions to Hindi, yeah? So he asked me, when I explained it's in Devanagari and it's in English, he said, why not in Tamil? <laughs> so, because he's the chief minister and it's very hard to kind of reply why it is not in Tamil, I being a Tamilian, so, so it was like, so, but you as a designer, you need to know the context and importance, yeah, why you're designing the uh, symbol and whom it is for, yeah. So, uh, I understanding that, so I wanted to 
ensure that the symbol is for everybody, yeah? so entire nation. So that's why I told the flag uh, idea of flag and in, in integrating various things. Yeah? So likewise, I did study so many things and spent a lot of research. And equally, I also designed. Yeah? I did a lot of iterations. I showed with uh, friends. So sometimes we feel like uh, uh, mirror design or koi chori karega, so somebody will copy it. But I did not have that kind of a problem. Yeah. So uh, I often said, I, I said earlier also to many of the places where I visit. So it's good if people copy my design, I'm, I'll be happy because they feel some merit in your design and they copy it. If they copy it, I'm better than them, I can do 10 more designs. And if they copy the 10 designs, I'll do 100 designs. If they copy 100 designs, I'll do 1,000 designs because I know what I am. So, <laughs> so I'm not so worried if they copy my design. So I just discuss and get a fit, good feedback. So that's a process. No, so ultimately, it's going to be the general public is, is the one who's going to use the design. Right? I mean, they'll be using it and uh, seeing it every day. And getting the feedback is very important. So I'm not so worried about the copyright and all those things. So I discuss with them, and they give me feedback, and I integrate that feedback. If I find it work, that's very important and should be implemented and so on. So it's a kind of a process. Yeah. So. I keep on working on it and I iterate it. Like I said, I had hundreds of designs, thumbnail sketches though, and then I shortlisted few of them, like 25, and then shortlisted 10, and then four, and then further refined these four, like I said, all these joineries, like angular one, right, left, center, which angle, what angle, and then what joineries and thickness. So there are a lot of things. So I kept on refining it, refining it, until I found it, okay, this is, pleasing to me. So finally, I have to freeze it based on my own visual judgment and be convinced that this should be the best design that is possible to design. And also, not just from the, uh, just the design iterations, I also conceptually had different ideas. Yeah? This I've not discussed in many places, very few places I discussed. Uh, so the initial concept was not uh, this one. Yeah? So the initial concept was based on the Indus Valley civilization. So the initial idea was to have uh, Indian rivers. Yeah? I had the symbol. So the overall form was the same, but if you look at these two horizontal lines, it had a wavy line. It showed, it actually represented what, uh, water, yeah, river. Because any civilization starts with the riverbed, yeah, because water becomes the essential for life. So this currency sign also was that kind of a conceptual idea I had. And also, I also had several other conceptual ideas, which I eliminated and found which would be the best. The reason I eliminated the idea of river, though it was a little bit stronger, uh, than what I'm kind of saying. So I had a lot of other things also connected to it. Like, uh, so I found that writing a curve, two curves, is going to be difficult for a person than writing a straight line. So these are the finer things which I kind of spent and understood logically, experienced myself, experienced, if you remember the uh, video, I, though I did not play the video, yeah, so the, these are things that gives you these insights, yeah, what should be the right thing to do, and what is, will be rightly accepted by the people, and also you're looking at somebody who is illiterate, literate, and different strata of population, right, it's just going to be, like, so many users are going to use it. So from their perspective, what it should be the right design? So having a curve, Will it make a difference? Yeah? It's just going to be a sine curve, yeah? just like this. And whether horizontal and what is going to make the difference? So these are decisions which I took. Then I went with a simple straight line, then the curve. So then I dropped the whole idea of this Indus Valley Civilization River and everything, all those things just, just simply threw off, yeah? just restricted to simple design, such that usability is what comes into, I mean, is important. Yeah? So, so likewise, there were so many things yeah, which I spent and worked on it. Uh, uh, two months, because the, uh, the duration for the competition was like, like I said, March to June or July, that was the deadline. So throughout that, since the beginning, I was been working on it, yeah. Though not constantly 24 hours, because I was also doing my PhD, like I already told you, so I was working on my thesis as well. So whenever there was a time possible, I was spending my hours in the evening trying to research, go to libraries, read books, study, and though. So there were hours, though I don't have count, but nearly two months I was trying to do a, a background research for designing the symbol. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think this. Sir, in terms of uh, standardization and variations, what have you found in 
the way the symbol is used by corporations and by different government agencies and wherever, are they s adhering to your construction drawing or are there variations and uh, difference, different uh, standards that they use? Well, there are a lot of variations. So it's not just the one which I did, but mostly on the coins and the rupee notes, the, the, on the currency notes. So they follow the same proportions which I have done. It's just the same. And with a little bit of a decoration with respect to the currency sign, they have the flowery details and all. But the proportions and everything is just the same. But there are other places which people feel free to kind of make their own versions of it with uh, slight variations in terms of proportions or thickness and details, yeah, which you will find uh, everywhere. Yeah? But most of the government things, especially in the coins and the currency notes, there are the same proportions that is there. Yeah. Okay, I think we have time for one last question. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, hello. So, my question was like when designing a symbol that is for the Indian rupee. So, you know, these things have to stand the test of time like, like 50 years or so maybe even a century because these things can't be changed so frequently. So, like uh, keeping like the boundlessness, uh, the timelessness of the design, was that in your, uh, in your mind the whole time or you just like made it for right now and then we look into the future? Uh, so I was mostly focused to kind of bring out the Indianness. Yeah, that was my primary target. Whatever the problem statement was, I wanted to fulfill that objective. So once it, I, I want to create a meaningful uh, design. So that was my primary goal. Timelessness is sometimes is not depends on you. It depends on the people how they accept it and how they kind of carry forward and continue to use it over a period of time. Yeah, so those, the simplicity is one way you can kind of create this timelessness. So I also had that objective to kind of make it as simple as possible so that it will be used for a very longer period of time. Though that was not specifically was in my mind that, okay, 100 years it is going to be there, yeah. But uh, though the, your question is valid, but you'll never know. So what happens tomorrow if all the Southeast Asian countries come together and have one common sign, currency sign? It is also possible, right? Just like a euro. Earlier, each country had their own sign, but they all become together and as a euro sign, there can be one symbol for that. But maybe similarly, all the Asian countries will come together and have a symbol. Then this symbol will not be there, right? So there, anything is possible. But that was not in my mind, but I wanted to create something which is very meaningful, which is Indian in nature. At the same time, it has a universal appeal and so on. So those were my major focus. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you and all the best. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, I would request uh, Dr. Dhananjay to kindly deliver the vote of thanks. Thank you very much, sir, uh, for uh, honoring us with your presence and then uh, uh, also uh, delivering this very, very wonderful uh, presentation. Uh, I have uh, I've known sir for uh, for almost uh, 14 years now. Although <laughs> probably uh, we have not uh, had uh, active uh, conversations in the past, but uh, it, it was during my MDES days that uh, the typography day phenomena had become a big thing. Uh, had had started so 2010, 2011, and uh, this is the same time that. Uh, Sir was completing his PhD, and then a lot of activity in the typography uh, fraternity was taking place. And uh, uh, Sir is among the very few uh, scholars, uh, academicians in India who, uh, who have uh, had this opportunity and have delivered on this opportunity of contributing to uh, to the scene of uh, uh, Indic type in, in big ways. And uh, uh, I'll, I'll formally get to the vote of thanks now. Uh, there are a couple of things that I've noted, and so I'll, I'll, I'll make use of my notes. So uh, thank you again, sir, for your, uh, for, uh, uh, for, uh, uh, sharing with us your uh, journey of uh, uh, conceptualizing this font and the process that you 
could present and then uh, gave us an gave us a, a detailed insight of uh, all of us could uh, could really did gain valuably from uh, the different perspectives that you shared towards this font design activity that the the the, the simple design activity that you uh, that you could contribute to uh, so you talked about the different cultural nuances that you took into consideration in consideration the semiotics aspect of semiotics the importance of uh, ensuring that the the symbol falls well fits well in the family of other fonts uh, you talked about the geometrical aspects nuances you talked about the the cognitive aspects that went into the decisions that you took and finally uh, to to offer um, the icing on top of the cake uh, you had all these uh, use cases that you very thoroughly explored and then uh, documented in your uh, submission um, so thank you sir uh, again for being here for sharing your uh, uh, your thoughts your ideas and the, the process for uh, uh, bringing about the indian rupee symbol thank you very much Thank you so much everyone for making this session a resounding success. Thank you once more to our guests on behalf of Karnavati University, United World Institute of Design and Innovation. Thank you so much. I hope you guys all come tomorrow. We have one more day of ADW 5.0. Equally great sessions happening tomorrow as well. See you tomorrow. Thank you so much.